You're listening to the NCF&B Podcast, part of the OG Podcast Network. The NCF&B Podcast takes you behind the scenes of North Carolina's food and beverage industry. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at NCFB Pod. This episode sponsored in part by Food Scene. That's food, S-E-E-N, dot com. Providing professional photography, social media management, video production, and website design. And now, enjoy the show. Hello, and thank you for listening to the NCFNB podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. And today we will be exploring the fusion of art and wine with who better than the owner and proprietor of Vita Vite in downtown Raleigh and the soon-to-be-coming Vita Vite wine bar in North Hills of Raleigh, North Carolina. North Hills! Sommelier and owner of Vita Vite, Ms. Lindsay Rice. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Pleasure. You know, Matt, I wasn't looking across to the table when you're giving that whole uh, introduction. introduction. I just thought we were doing a wine design class. Oh, hey now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that whole wine design class, I don't know how you feel about that, but it's a little BS. It would be cool like if they actually served one, but you have to bring your own wine. Oh, give it to them, Matt. And Give it to them. Yeah. So I don't understand the point. It's not like you can go there and buy a glass of wine. Like, that would be cool mm-hmm. if you actually learned how. And don't get me wrong. It's nice to do, like, wines and you have that cool piece of art. Like, you do it as a date. Like, that's kind of cool. But they don't have any wine. You bring your own wine. I, I keep my painting that I did at Wine and Design in my laundry room, if that tells you anything about my, <laughs> my skills as an well, artist. <laughs> and as we a, still haven't hung ours. <laughs> so. And as a GM of a place that had a little little room in the back that had carpet, I said, when they came in to do their event, I said, you guys are going to put a drop cloth down, right? And they looked at me like I had three eyes. I go, why is that a weird request? And they go, huh? I said, you're going to have acrylic paint all over the place <laughs> like and Trump drunks. <laughs> like, yeah. Why? That's not a good combination. Not on my carpet, you won't. <laughs> and they're like, uh, I guess we could maybe. And I think one of them had to run to the store and go get a drop cloth and come back. Like, it was such an inconvenience. I go, this should be part of your Kill, you know, Dexter's Kill Lab. Like, this, you should always have that. Wait, they did an event at, at Midtown? Yeah, like three years ago. They did huh. an event, and, you know, we had couples come in and and do wine, and I did the pairings for whatever. And I mean, it was cool, but leading up to it, I yeah. went, all well, right. That's better than bringing your own wine and with, like, no theme. You know what's funny? It's also misleading. <laughs> this because- episode is about wine design. <laughs> No, we might Lindsay, you can go. Out. You can get out of here. <laughs> Matt and I are just going to go. Yeah. But seriously, this is like, they're all over the place. They're relatively popular. Again, I don't think it's a bad idea, but like, it's so misleading because it really has n- n- almost nothing to do with wine. And to the fact where when I was coming down here, when we were moving and I was looking for jobs, <laughs> I kept looking and I think their jobs were even posted on wine jobs or they kept coming up in wine searches. Like... I don't. I don't get that. Well, that's because that. of SEO. I mean, it right, says wine it in the wine, name, but which is even more misleading. But right. I guess that's look. At anyway. the, so tell at me, the Lindsay, about your, wine your, by design. Your, your new <laughs> wine bar should be called Wine at Vita Vite, and that would change your whole Google search. That's what I need to do. You know, yeah. it's funny when we first opened. That's just about 90% of the calls that we got. So do you do wine and design classes? Do you <laughs> offer classes? No, we are actually a gallery. We represent professional artists. Yeah. This is, you know, it's a little bit different, but thankfully I think we've dispelled that image a little bit at this point. So. Yeah. And at, if you go to Vita Vite, you actually have a very well-crafted selection of wine. We do. And a well-curated, oh, yeah. And, and art, art on the walls. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget that part. So is that, when you wake up in the morning, how do you, uh, Look at yourself first. Are you Lindsay the artist or the art lover or Lindsay the business owner slash wine guru? I think if you'd asked me before Vita Vite opened, I would have told you I'm the art lover. I'm the wine lover. No, right now I am first and foremost my dogs. I wake up and I'm a dog mom. But then oh, after you're the, one of them. I'm one of those. You and I, Matt can yeah. talk about dogs for the next 25 minutes. That's, that's I'm, all I'm, I worry I'm about. I'm in need for a dog babysitter, so maybe we can talk about that. <laughs> there we go. No, that's what I do first and foremost. And then after that, it's, it's business owner. That's what it's become. It's, mm. you know, what is going to pop up today? What can I, you know, how am I going to talk to my staff and work on, you know, every single day is something new and different in this business because not only, you know, are we a bar, but we've 
combined a bunch of different businesses into one. So it makes it, I don't know, the game is different every single day. Yeah. But that keeps it exciting. I love it for that reason. I mean, it's something new. It's yeah. So let's jump in there. Uh, you went to a small liberal arts, all-girls school, Sweet Briar College. I and did. then you end up, lo and behold, going to Georgetown for a master's degree. Hoyas! Hey. <laughs> Alonzo Mourning, Dikebe Matumbo. Mm-mm-mm-mm. How do you leave out Patrick Ewing in that? Oh, yeah. But Again, let's not talk basketball because somebody's <laughs> going to come along and shush us. Let's talk about <laughs> the Sacramento Kings circa 2003. What a good team. No, that's a Um So uh, along there, I assume, yeah, you are getting – you're gearing yourself for some sort of uh, curator position in a highfalutin museum or something like that. Yeah, you know, I, I've always loved gallery work. It's always been my plan to have a gallery. I, I – spent time in museums. I, as part of my master's, I, I did internships and I had jobs in various different departments of the arts essentially. And what I loved more than anything was gallery work. Okay. And so I said, you know what, when I, when I grow up, I want to own a gallery. And then I started growing up a little bit more and I fell in love with wine. And so I thought, well, what better way to combine two of my passions than create a place where you can sit and have a glass of wine and look at a beautiful painting. Yeah. And if you want to take it home with you, that's great. But if not, you're sitting in a beautiful environment yeah. being able to enjoy life. And that's what it's all about for us. Yeah, well, I think a lot of great restaurants put up art and have it cycle through and all that. But I like the fact that you're – that that was almost more the inside out. Like you started there and built out uh, a, a wine bar. And so just for point of reference, uh, you are located in downtown Raleigh. We are. Uh, street – Target. Target. You're on Hargit, that's mm-hmm. right. Uh, across the street from the newly opened a, t- uh, a place at the table. Place at the table, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Great neighbors, we love them. Yeah, and um, so uh, okay, and then um, sorry, my brain's like I'm thinking of like four things at one time. I'll Story of my life. Out. Yeah. So, um, so how long has Vita Vita been open? We have been open almost two and a half years. Okay, yeah, so it's relatively new, and then you're on to your second venture coming up soon, so that's uh, ambitious. I love that. That's drive. Well, I mean, why not do it now? When the tide is high, keep on rolling, I guess. it's. Um, we. I was very lucky that North Hills came to me and said, we love what you do, and we think that this would be a really successful, wonderful venture in the new Park Central building. Yeah, and you're it, in the Midtown Green area. Yeah, we're overlooking Midtown Park where all the concerts happen, Wellness Wednesday. There are all kinds of events going on all the time there. And we have a beautiful space that has a mezzanine level and all the doors open up and you can look out over the park. And I think it's just going to be a really, really wonderful place for people up there who... I, my thing has always been you shouldn't have to go to a restaurant to get a good glass of wine. We're a beer town. I get that. Everybody loves beer. There are tons of bottle shops. But everybody loves wine, too. And why not be able to have a place that you can sit and drink wine, not feel the pressure to have to order a full meal, yeah. can hang out for eight hours if you want to, which people do sometimes. And that's great. <laughs> can, can I say that uh, as a wine lover myself and having been in Los Angeles where wine bars are pretty common – Um, that was the first thing I looked for in moving here and moving into North Hills. You'd kind of just think at North Hills, there should be a great wine bar. And uh, Vivace has got a good wine scene. It's more Italian, of course, or it is all Italian. And then even the place I worked, Midtown Grill, had a pretty good wine selection. And, and, you know, and then I made it amazing, of course. (laughs) Obviously. Uh, But really, there wasn't like a devoted wine bar to that area. And it was like, uh, hey, everybody, this is the place. If you're going to have a wine bar in any part of the city, Put it here in, in this particular area, just meaning that like the, the shoppers and the demographic, if you will, it's like people like to drink wine, especially parents that are 30 to 40, 50 years old. And, you know, they they want to just guzzle it down while their kids are napping. But it's taken at least since I've been here four and a half years to finally make that happen. Right. I think, Matt, you said the same thing when you came down here. You're like, this place is cool, man. But where do I get a good glass of wine? You know, sidebar, Max, to that. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember, but I do. Our very first date was at a wine bar in L.A. Yours and mine? Yeah. Oh, was it at uh, Bodega? No. It was at that place in Santa Monica. That place in Santa Monica. Thanks. Obviously, I don't remember the memorable. name of it. <laughs> right, uh, right around the corner from Bay Cities. Bodega. Yeah. It's like a late night place that had they had one one price for all their wines, and they're all screw cap. Maybe. I, know, I, I sold remember one. it was just like kind of a cheesy L.A. or very like gaudy L.A., like marble, white top, granite. No marble, I guess, but yeah, it, it was okay. 
The company was good. <laughs> oh, obviously. Thanks. Obviously. Yeah. We've like been in somewhere. love ever since. That's yeah. somewhere great. That was the beginning. <laughs> it, was, it was a lo- low, I mean, that's a long time ago. But, but back to your point about good wine bars. Well, and, and to your point, Lindsay, I mean, it's it's been a beer-centric state for, for a long time. But it's like, I think people are missing the boat on the beauty of wine. And yeah, you've only been able to, to find good wine when you're at a restaurant. And that doesn't necessarily need to be the case. No, not at all. And, and the grand majority of people, when they found out we were opening in North Hills, have said, that makes complete sense. I get it. And, and a couple people have said, well, why there? Why would you go there? I said, because people love to go out. I mean, why wouldn't we go there? It makes yeah. so much sense. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, there are so many people living and working right around there. They want to drink wine. They want to be able to relax on a Friday afternoon and have a couple glasses. And so why not? Well, and can I give you a little insider business talk? Uh, a good friend of mine has been running the bar program at Level 7, which is just, you know, he'll be your neighbor. Mm-hmm. Yep. Their budget of what they put forth was exceed. Their budget for the year last year was exceeded in the first quarter. Wow. And he's like, dude, I mean, and, and so, I mean. This is a success story, so I don't really feel bad about saying it out loud because they're just crushing it there. But there's so much business to be had. And so yeah. you need to get in there and like scoop up some of that business and yeah. it'll level out anyways. Pardon the pun, level seven. But <laughs> um, but, they, uh, but they're doing a good job over there and it's a fun place to be. And they're really more just a lounge. They don't really do food there. They do like some snacks. It's more just kind of drinking. And clearly the community spoke. They're like, wait, what? You can just get cocktails there? Yeah, we'll be there in a second. So well, they think, have a beautiful terrace as well. They do. Yeah. yeah. And you also have all that happy hour crowd from PwC and all the other businesses around. Mm-hmm. Um, and plus you have the cowfish there and the banking, all that. Yeah. yeah. The so, banking so much stuff. there. Yeah. So many apartment buildings too. A lot so, of people live there. That's true. And they're building more residential areas too. And with the hotels there. And Kilwin's ice cream right next door to you. I know. Oh my God. I know. I, I keep telling people we're on the, there's the health side on the other side of the building. We're on the ice cream and wine side of the building. <laughs> When it comes to vodka, it starts at the farm. Social House Vodka sources corn locally from a farmer who plants non-GMO corn. And because it's made from corn, it's also gluten-free. Social House Vodka comes from Kenston, North Carolina, and sources water from the ancient Black Creek Aquifer. Social House Vodka. Live socially. Enjoy responsibly. So I think that it's always one of the hugest compliments and form of flatteries when somebody asks you, they come to you and say, can you open up a business here? But I'm thinking that maybe some of our listeners who might not know you or might be outside of Raleigh who don't know about Vita Vite, we should tell them a little bit about yourself and your story and sure. how you came to be. So yeah, why you? Uh, who are you? Who Lindsay am I? Rice. Um, yeah. And how did you get the idea for this and, you know, put this business plan together and become a business owner? Yeah. So as we've said before, my background is in the arts. I did my master's in art history and museum studies. I lived in DC for a long time, London as part of my master's. And I've always been focused on art and eventually opening a gallery, but I grew up in a family where everything's about eating and drinking. Mm. My mother is a crazy, amazing hostess and cook, and my dad is as well. And and we just – everything was about coming together at the table. Yeah. And so that's kind of what inspired Vita Vite is the thought that, you know, we're all going and living our crazy lives. But if we can come together and drink together and eat together and share in that, that sense of community and togetherness, mm. then – it's all going to be okay. And so that's kind of what made me want to create an, a place like Vita Vite is, yeah. is I wanted somewhere that people could be comfortable, that they could feel like they're sitting at home. You might not know anybody there. We get a lot of people who come in by themselves and they eventually become our friends because we sit there and we talk to them every day. I mean, I just had a bunch of our customers spend Easter with me at my house. It's That's kind of how we have a very family vibe there. And, and I just wanted a place that felt like home and you could feel like family. So how do you go about starting that? Like, uh, I know that you also went to get a WSCT sommelier uh, certification at Johnson & Wales. I did. And my love of wine is it's very much, you know, yes, I do have some wine knowledge, but more than anything, it's just loving it and having a passion for it and wanting to share that with people. And, right. you know, I pride myself on being able to pick out what somebody wants after a couple adjectives of them telling me it's not for me. It's not so much about the education. It's more about I taste everything I can try to figure out what what makes people tick, what they're going to love. And our list is very eclectic and a little bit 
eccentric. It's not huge, very purposefully. It's mm-hmm. it's crafted that way on purpose. It's um, We try to have varietals that you're familiar with and you know, but then something super funky and weird that yeah. you've never heard of, but Just you're going to fall you love it. Yeah. yeah. And, and be, you know, when we first opened, people were a little bit scared of that. And we've seen it change over the past couple of years that they're willing, you know, they come in and say, okay, what's new? What have I never heard of that yeah. I want to try now? Which makes me so happy because that's how my wine love started. Sure. Yeah, it's a very pragmatic right. way of doing it, too. I look at like your love and passion for wine is like similar to mine of beer, where I would go out to say I, I know a pretty good amount of wine and, and even like on liquor. But I almost purposely don't want to know much about beer <laughs> other than I love the taste of beer yeah. and all of its different things. I mean, I know a, a good amount of beer, too, but my knowledge isn't my wheelhouse isn't beer. But that's probably what I drink more than anything, as right. you can tell. Um <laughs> And it's, you know, I enjoy it. Like the guy next door at, at Total Wine uh, to Midtown Grill would always see me in Total Wine getting beer because they have a ton of beer there. And he's like, you know, for being a Psalm, I've never seen you buy a bottle of wine here. I'm like, well, two reasons. <laughs> you maybe should l- l- look into that more. <laughs> <laughs> but I also run my own program. I can get my own wine, whatever. Right. But when I go home, I just want to enjoy and turn my brain off. And I feel like indulging in a beer is easy. Whereas with wine, like even if Matt and I are just sitting here and we're just having a glass of wine, we typically will just like talk about it. We'll think about it. Ooh, that's nice. And oh, blah, blah, blah. And we'll talk about the nuance. But sometimes you just don't want to do that. Right. You're just like, I just want to enjoy it. And I do get that vibe at Vita Vite where it's like, yes, there's some cool heady stuff, but it's really more like you have you've curated this list the way an artist would curate it to your interests and to the way you look at like it, but you are just a lover of wine. So you can go in there and don't have to be too heady and just know and trust that the selections are going to be there for you uh, in a comfortable way. Yeah. And that's, and truly, I mean, I, I always talk about that. That's what I think makes us unique is there's not an ounce of pretension at VWJ. Yeah. And I did that purposefully. It was crafted that way because I don't want anyone to feel like they have to know a thing about wine, a thing about art to come in and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. As yeah. long as you can come in and I can't tell you how many days a week somebody will come in and say, I don't know anything about wine. So that's completely fine. We will find something that you love. Yeah. And and it, if you don't know about art, that's great. But that doesn't mean you can't sit and look at something beautiful and appreciate it. Yeah. Which to that point, I assume in that any artist probably can never, it's like a movie director they can never watch their movie because they're always critiquing it. And an artist who paints something is probably always looking at it as an unfinished thing, but you just finally had to walk away and say, okay, this is how it is. So, and that's, yeah, unfortunately how some winemakers are like intense sommeliers look at wine, but this is not Vita Vite. No, it's, it's not. And I, I try to create a comfortable space, not just for our customers, but for our, you know, our artists as well. They, I want them to feel like, they can try anything, do anything, be anything, and we're going to appreciate them for their talent and what they can do. So, Talk to me about the business side for a second, though. So was that intentional to go to get a sommelier certification so that you could open up a wine bar or was it just for love of wine and it's like, I want to learn more? A little bit of a little bit of both, honestly. I mean, I felt like I, I wanted to have that going into opening yeah. a wine bar, but but I, I do truly think that so much of my knowledge has come from my experiences and just like I said before trying everything and being open to everything and I mean that's the best way to learn is you just taste every single thing you possibly can and and learn about it and don't get me wrong I I read constantly about wine I'm 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 all about learning about it but really it was more just trying to learn as much as I could to open the place yeah so it was intentional it was it was intentional I mean yeah, I and, won't pretend like it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, no, that's. I think that's awesome. So I just, I'm always interested in that like aha moment or mm-hmm. that epiphany when it's like, no, I'm doing this. I'm I'm going to put my effort towards opening the business because it's like Max and I always talk about the podcast. It was like there was a couple of moments where it was like, okay, we're going to do this, and then we finally sat down. But when you're opening up a business, many people write a business plan or more. You know, I'm just curious into get into your head a little bit about was it thinking like I want to open this gallery but I love wine. What should I do? Wait, why don't I just do it together? Was it something like that? Well, uh, full disclosure, I I don't think I realized how quickly the bar part would become successful. That was an unexpected blessing that people loved us and wanted to come there five days a week. Ah. And so I, when I set out, I mean, my business plan, my first business plan <laughs> had, you know, 50, 50 split with art and wine. Right. And I mean, the art 
while we sell a ton of art, I mean, that bar is busy every single night. That's yeah. that's what it is. People mm-hmm. come there to drink. We added small plates on. So we do cheese and charcuterie and hummus and pimento cheese. And we try to highlight local family-run businesses because that's what we're all about, you know, trying to be as local as possible and except with the wine, which is very international. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, it. I I was a little bit naive when I first started about how the business would be split. And, and it's been a pleasant surprise that the bar has taken off so quickly. Yeah. But let's be honest, though. So you have a lot to do with the design of something. Mm-hmm. I mean, you obviously have a creative and artistic mind, and, and we were even alluding to the design of the new place uh, before we got on the mics, and we'll get into that, too, because I love that your creative mind saw an opportunity and you decided to not go away from it, but like run towards it, uh, which is beautiful. And so uh, the point I'm making is your bar, uh, the original one downtown, it's a pretty big bar. So real estate wise, um, it wasn't like you just had this like kiosk in the corner where you're just pouring, you know, boxed wine for people, but really you're here for art. I would, when I walk in, I look at it like this is a wine bar. Right. Oh, there's art on the wall. So I, that's my intent or my, my purpose when I walk in there is I, I personally feel like the art was almost like a, a secondary thought. But it, I, I'm almost thinking maybe intentionally you would thought it was going to be a gallery first, bar second. Not so much first and second, but people would come in <clears throat> equally for both parts of the business. Sure. We're a part of First Friday. We're a part of – we are involved with the Design District Raleigh. We're on their map of a gallery. We still get people who come in – for the gallery. They're not interested at all in the bar. They come because they want to see the art. We open at noon for that purpose. Yeah. What I didn't realize necessarily is that people are going to be out drinking at noon and we're going to be busy Hell during yeah, the afternoon. Too. Yeah, I mean, of course, that's, yeah. that's what we do. So. I, I mean, it makes so much sense when you think about it, right? Like how many times have you gone to a museum, right? You get so much, even if you're into art, you still get that fatigue inevitably. I mean, mm-hmm. I would imagine even the most scholarly academians or uh, art historians still get that museum fatigue how nice would it be to be like let me just take a break or have a glass of wine while i walk around yeah. and relax like that makes so much i don't sense. think you can get a glass of bordeaux in the louvre right? no definitely not <laughs> if only you could i mean you can go to like the cafeteria yeah. or that part or outside and <laughs> yeah. get but no that makes can you imagine sense. can you imagine if you're in the cafeteria at the louvre and they're like oh we have on for glass a mayomi and and Rombauer. <laughs> Can you imagine? Rombauer, Chardonnay, and Naomi Pinot Noir at the Louvre. At the that Louvre. would definitely be a sign of the apocalypse. <laughs> Glass in hand looking at the Mona Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> this segment is brought to you by the Triangle Wine Company. Visit Triangle Wine Company stores in Morrisville, Cary, and Southern Pines, North Carolina. Or order your wine and beer online at trianglewineco.com. And be sure to use our promo code NCFB to receive 10% off your purchases. Triangle Wine Company. Now, as it two and a half years in, what uh, what's the breakdown of your sales of art versus wine and food? I mean, it's seventy percent wine. wine. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's very much wine. And you know, we I will say we have beer. We have six taps. We always have local beer on tap. And, yeah. You know, we're trying. We have something, and we sell a lot of beer too, which sure. is not that surprising. But but yeah, it's it's really a lot of a lot of wine yeah because also those sales wise when you sell a piece of art that's a lot more than selling one glass of wine right. or two glasses of wine but yeah right. but that's also a big commitment. yeah it's like when you talk to a real estate agent you're like, how many houses are you selling i mean if they sell one a quarter they're like yeah and then they're yeah. doing okay you're making a nice living home. right but right. you're selling wine every day because oh, that's yeah. what's keeping the lights on exactly so it's a nice slam dunk when you can get a piece of art off the wall and put it in somebody's car. Absolutely. And, yeah. and we've somehow become a place that people buy their first painting. I didn't realize that that was going to be the case. We have a lot of price points for our art purposefully and we will have people come in and they're, you know, it's a 25 year old girl and she just bought her first house and she needs a painting for over her mantle. And we've been 25 year old girl. Well, okay. Just <laughs> bought her first house. Wow. She's Listen, impressive. 29 <laughs> year old girl. Let's give her a couple okay. more years, but you get my point. She, you know, we're that place that somebody, they say, okay, I love this artist. I, I can see this in my home. They get their glass of Bordeaux and they're walking around and, yeah. and they're looking, they're looking at the art and they feel that connection to it. And we'll have people come back six or seven times and end up. Yeah. Buying. Do you offer or like hook them up? I'm just thinking, cause I, I would, I could see myself doing that, but then I'm like the worst at properly hanging art or stuff like that, you know, or, and also finding where to put it in your home. Do you also help with that? Yeah. Like I mean, I've, I've 
delivered two paintings last week. It's it's one of those that I'll I do that all myself. I still my hand is in every single aspect of that business, but especially oh, wow. the art. I'm I'm the one who does everything with the art. I hang every piece. I am in contact with every artist and if somebody oh, you wants hang it every delivered. piece in the in the in it, at Vita Vita, yeah, yeah. yeah. And not at your house or in your, yeah. in your <laughs> so you won't come not... to my house and hang my art. I will. Right? Can you, you hang my to? wine design <laughs> <laughs> over my toilet? How's this? How's this? If you buy a painting from me, I'll come hang it in your and house. the wine design stuff. Okay, well, <laughs> you're on your own with that. <laughs> but and lighting is a big deal with with art as well it because is. Uh, obviously, like you could have different filters in your light bulbs and on and screens, so you've kind of got to know how to. You can't just buy art and put it on your wall. You right. have to have some intention of how you put it and where you put it and why it's there with the natural light in your yeah. house or so. So, yeah, there's a lot of different elements that go involved to making the art look as good as it possibly could. It is It is true. And I'm a big believer in trying it in your home to see if it, it fits. And that's why I'll – you know, we let people take things on approval. You have 24 hours to go test it in your home and live with it and see if it – it feels like it fits in there or I'll drive it to your house and hold it up on the wall for you to see. Yeah. You can step back and watch. And, and, you know, it's funny at Vita Vita, we have that same balance too. It's, you know, we want to have a dark, cozy environment there. You're sitting right. on a leather couch in front of a fireplace. You want it to be cozy, but you're not going to have beach to be... scenes. Well, yeah, Hey, sometimes we do. It's mm. summer in North Carolina. You want, you know, you want to be able to envision yourself at the beach, but it's a hard balance for us too, trying to lighting and, and mm -hmm. all of that, because I want the art to be important. I don't want it to just be stuck up on the wall. I want you to notice it, but you know, you also want to drink in a cozy environment. So How, what, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to transition a little bit. Uh, here's where commercial break would come in and now we're back. <laughs> um, I want to talk about you as an artist, uh, you yourself, Lindsay Rice, photographer, uh -huh. and and get into, um, you know, obviously I, I live with a photographer, so I understand uh, her plight as far as understanding great photography. And I mean, just yesterday, she asked me to take a picture of her for some social media thing, and I had to take like 48 pictures, and none of, of them were right, and she used none of them. Of course. <laughs> uh, and that's fine, because I'm not a good photographer, but, but, uh, but you yourself are an accomplished photographer, so... Uh, so you dip into the creative mind as well as uh, not just um, being a lover and a curator of art, but you you do it as well. You get into it. So what kind of art are you making with photography? What, what is your subject matter and what do you typically shoot? So to be honest with you, photography has taken a backseat since Vita Vite. Um, I I love travel photography. I still I travel a lot and. I'll take my camera with me on these trips. And mm -hmm. that's what's always been, you know, it's the same thing as what Vita Vita is all about. It's taking something that you've seen somewhere exotic and unique and bringing it back and sharing it with people at home. Experiential and, photography. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it, it might be artistic and, and it might just be a beautiful landscape. I mean, yeah. so that's kind of been my favorite way of, of doing it. I mean, I had a photography business before I opened VV and, you know, I, I loved it. And it's there's nothing more calming than holding a camera and you know sharing the world through that lens. But yeah. but I think more than anything, it's given me a great perspective for my artists because I can say I understand. I've been there. I've tried to sell work. I've had ex, you know exhibits. I've I've been there. I understand. I cannot paint worth a lick. I have no ounce of talent in that regard. I mean, I can see things differently, and and but I just you know it's. It's just a little bit of a connection to what they're going through. Yeah. I always find like – like because I know like my forte, I guess, is more on the music side. But I always marvel at those that are such huge music fans that are not musicians, let's say, and how their appreciation for music I always feel goes far beyond what mine is. And, and I studied – a multiple amount of instruments over since I was five. And I, I would like have the arrogance to say, well, I'm going to know more about music than most people do. And I do know a lot about music, but when you start talking to those guys when they're like, yeah, man, I love listening to the first uh, Elvis Costello album. And then like, then they get into, you know, but you got to get deeper and listen to like the old Joe Jackson tunes and like stuff that like, you know, you wouldn't normally hear. And you're like, wow, you really love music. I wish I could love music the way you love music. And that's how I kind of feel like that's probably how you are with your artwork where a lover sometimes is is more uh, the 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 person you want to speak to about that craft than the one that actually is doing it. Perhaps yeah, I don't you know. Can, you can step back and and see things a little more clearly, I think, than somebody who's in their head about this painting and you know they can't they can't get past exactly what they've done and what they haven't done. And and I can say, but this is amazing. This is going to look good 
you know, go right. with it. So it's a, it's a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering about that in terms of uh, buying art versus buying wine because you're doing both. I mean, you buy some of the wine with along with your colleague over there, Christian. Mm-hmm. And um, but when you're when you're hanging walls at Vita Vite and the soon to be Vita Vite North Hills. By the way, is that what it's going to be Midtown. called? Midtown. Uh, Vita, Vita Vita Midtown. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, is, do you buy the do you buy the art or you hang it on consignment? It's on consignment. Okay. Yeah, and and then I have an open relationship with the artist where if something's not working, they can take it back and bring me something new. So it's ever changing. I, I you know every time you come in, you could see new art on the walls. I I try to keep it very fresh on purpose. Okay. And so the art is local though. The art artist southern. that you southern mm-hmm. southern southeast states of yeah of somewhat yep. And are you then? Like I think where Matt was maybe going with this, but are you being selective the way a wine director is selective with their their wine program? I mean, you're yeah. not just saying, "All right, artist, throw up whatever you want." Oh no, it's it's very curated, and right. I am a complete control freak, and everything I hang. That's why I hang everything because I I'm very into color and texture, and and you know the aesthetic of it is very important. Subject to me. matter sometimes maybe. Yeah, or? I mean, we if you walk in there, the majority of what you see there is abstract at this point because we've found that that's what people love. That's what they're buying downtown. I don't know what it's going to be in North Hills. It might be really different. Mm-hmm. But but for us, abstract work is what sells. People love bright colors. They love gold leaf. They love, you know, something that's really, really vibrant. And so that's what we sold the most of. Would you call that, and I know very little about art, but would you call that like contemporary yeah. abstract? Yeah, okay. absolutely. So, and so pretty much all the artwork that would be there would be contemporary or even, dare I say, modern? Uh, the majority of it. Okay. We do have landscapes still. We mm. have, you know, we have some, some of our artists work they paint in oil and they're very, very realistic and their landscapes are still lifes. But for the most part, it's really large scale, brightly colored abstract pieces. Interesting. Cool. So um, what about you just as an art lover, art lover in general? Um, like what were what were some artists that we would know that maybe had helped formulate uh, your interest into art? I mean, I mean, imagine there's a lot of names out that everyone knows, the Da Vinci's and the Michelangelo's, but but more like give us some not such big hitters that maybe have been influential in your life. Well, I'm I'm going to throw you all off here because I'm a medievalist by training oh. and my my cool. degree is medieval art so i was always cathedrals and illuminated manuscripts and tapestries and stained glass windows that's what i loved and yet my home is filled with huge very colorful abstract pieces so it's it's really i'm but that's an irony. Old, i'm a weird yeah, but, yeah. But, max what's her uh <laughs> art, what's her astrological sign oh jeez. and now for the segment where max guesses your <laughs> astrological sign oh i think okay I- i'm gonna guess and see, now this might be cheating because I think we're Facebook friends and I kind of remember when you had a birthday. Oh, yeah, I think it was recently. <laughs> it was. Uh, so my daughters are right after each other mm-hmm. and both of their signs are very artistic. And I think that's probably where you're at. So don't say it out loud, but you're, you are either an Aquarius or a Pisces. I'm going to go Aquarius. You got it. Boom. Good work. Kind of cheated, but fine. I mean, you, you know, Facebook quality. gives it all away, but, but yeah. Yes, but I both have... of those signs are very artistic, and actually, yeah. I think the the Aquarius is even more because it's like a water sign is almost more on that like a, like like it is a fluid feeling, and you're you're supposed to be like in it rather than it. Whereas the Pisces is the fish in the water, the the Aquarius is is the water like letting things happen. So it's almost like it is the definition of being the curator bringing the art in and like housing it there you go wow. man i learned so much about myself being here seriously Gosh. that's right <laughs> take a look at yourself nice nice work man well curated so, um, but so but but even the architectural design of uh, uh vita vitae from what i've gathered now that you said this has some like gothic medieval tones of it there are those dark like there's like i believe like some like well there's dark browns and even some is it, would I say there's wrought iron in areas? Yeah, 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 we have we have metals, we have we have reclaimed wood. I you know concrete floors. It is yeah. It well, kind of has a castle type of it cathedral does. feel to there it. There you go, dark gray walls. I'm just trying to be cozy and in a in a big cathedral. That's that's all it is. Which Midtown is not going to be like that. Little little bit of a 
Is it going to look here. like a Wolfgang Puck from 1984? <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> Geometric shapes and a bunch Literally, of crazy mosaic You tiles. hit on the design head with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there will be Dude, time. astrological <laughs> and design. Dude, you're just you're in my head. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's transition to that. So I was Wait, alluding. I have one question before we get into Midtown. So, <laughs> okay. And I might sound like a dumbass, so we might have to cut. But then wouldn't like... Oh, no, we're keeping it if you sound like a dumbass. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that transition from like medieval Renaissance or uh, to Renaissance painting be like, then that would make your favorite painter Renoir. Well, you're jumping way ahead with that, but yeah, bro, but no, geez. yeah, come on, no, your centuries, but no, it's a, uh, it's, it's I'm, uh, no, not Renoir, um, Rembrandt, Rembrandt, yes. You know, I yes. I'm more Renaissance. Yeah, you yeah. would you would think that I have I would have that kind of love of something more traditional, and I I do, and you know if you. Yes, I have big, colorful, abstract pieces in my house, but I also have beautiful still lifes, and I also have landscapes, and I have a painting of the National Cathedral in D.C. And you know, I because I believe that homes are eclectic now. Nobody has a home that's all one style anymore. Mm. Those days are gone for the most part, and and so you know, you might want to mix styles. You mix furniture styles, so why not mix art styles in your home too? So yeah. it's yeah. a little bit of everything. But it's, it's yeah, funny it's, when I was in the Louvre, the aforementioned Louvre. Um, I'm looking at art. Felicia is an uh, art history minor, uh, and we were there looking at you know different artwork. And I found not reading the names and then going back to them later on, like just kind of you know you know what you like, you like what you like, you don't know why you like it so much. And I definitely have no art history knowledge. We know that you're a R- Peter Paul Rubens fan. That's what I was going to say. See? You know astro- Holy astrology. Shit. <laughs> I know art. Did you know I was going to say that? Of course. The curvaceous naked woman. Of course I know you like that. <laughs> I went to Rubens every single time. Rubenesque, I guess, right? Rubenesque. But, exactly. But, every, but it wasn't all – but not all of his subject matter are, are naked women. It's just I liked the colors and like the way things would go out. And I'm like, oh, that's a pretty fascinating painting. And then we'd go somewhere else into another room. I'm like, oh, that's really cool too. And then I remember going back and I went – Oh, that's a Rubens. And then, oh, that's a Rubens. I'm like, I think I like Rubens. Okay, so we- to take that and apply it to VV, we have so many people who walk in, and I love when this happens, and they go around without looking at the tags, and their favorite paintings are all by the same artist. That's mm. cool. And it's a style it's that they're attracted to, to. Yeah, I love that. It's It makes me so happy when that happens. That's cool. You actually told me that on your first on our first date at the wine bar. <laughs> well, he doesn't remember that date, <laughs> yeah, so that's so, why. Yeah. I'm so insulted. <laughs> <laughs> he's living in the now, not the past. Yeah. He's, oh, he's, my. Yeah. Well, he lives in both because he's the <laughs> – what, what's your sign again? I'm a Libra, so I'm a little Libra, bit of everything. So, yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. Uh, well, no, okay, let's so, get into so, to, uh, Vita Vita Midtown. Midtown. We'll, yeah. we'll, I'll tee it up for you a little bit because we were having coffee before we turned on the microphones. And you, you and my wife were discussing that uh, you were – you were challenged um, when you were looking at the second floor, the mezzanine level of the the, the newly open or soon to be open. Soon I mean, open. Um, Vita Vita in Midtown, that the bar area was going away that maybe you didn't know, and then you just said, "Oh, screw it, let's just do it this way instead." So explain, and I, I love the 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 mind behind it and the thought process. So yeah, so you know, I think when I first started, it's a huge space. It's six thousand square feet, right around there, That's and downtown though is. 200 square feet less than that. We have an event space at the back downtown, and if you include that in it, it's almost the same size. Oh, okay. yeah. The difference is that we're going to have seating everywhere mm. at Midtown. So it's this big open space with huge soaring ceilings, and there's this mezzanine level, and it has a nano wall. So the the wall opens up completely. You know, almost the whole thing opens up. So there's this, and there's a balcony. So there's this really incredible indoor outdoor space overlooking Midtown Park. So, you know, I see this as being people come and watch concerts and they're, you know, the music is coming in, it's beautiful weather. So we had put in the design process, we had put a small kind of service bar upstairs thinking, uh, this will be, you know, just if we have an event up here, that's going to be our kind of event space. If you want to rent out something, it's the mezzanine level. Mm -hmm. So we throw in this little bar and a couple weeks ago I get in the space and it's all framed out. And I said, Oh my gosh, the bar's not big enough. Mm. Hold on, guys. Stop construction, which is what every architect and general contractor wants to hear when you're <laughs> yeah. a month into it and you're on a you know tight deadline. But I said, I I feel like though this might set us back a little bit and it's going to probably cost a little bit more and it might not be right now what we think is the best idea in the end. We're going to need to have that a bar's huge bar be up jammed. here. I know. Yeah. So we have two big bars that so we now have changed the design. So it's a big open bar upstairs too. Mm-hmm. So lots of places to get wine and Vita Vita cool. Midtown. And Will there be like a stylistic difference between the bars? 
Yeah, there will be because upstairs is so open and airy and there's not as much wall space to hang art. So I'm not as concerned about, you know, controlling the light. And and really, this whole space is a lot more open than downtown is. We have no windows downtown. The only natural light is through the front doors. Yeah, right. And that was on purpose there. I wanted the dark walls to be able to control the light. But at Midtown, we have a whole wall of windows. So it's going to feel naturally so much more yeah. open so we're gonna try to embrace that and the design is a little more colorful and bright and lots of more uh white wines and rosés well, maybe at the upstairs I've, bar yeah i think i think rosé is gonna be pretty you know, jamming yeah oh yeah and froze don't even get me started on that Uh-oh. But... <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah rosé is fun it is so so we're uh we've already been getting questions about that downtown when is frosé coming back so as soon as the weather warms for up for those that don't understand it's like a slushy it's a rosé slushy yeah yeah that's pretty delicious it, it is especially it's... when like it's july in raleigh and it's you know 93 degrees, degrees and it's 100 percent humidity oh yeah a frosé is all you need it is indeed. So you can definitely drink Frosé on the porch at Midtown listening to a concert. So that's that's the idea there. Mm-hmm. We're, I'm trying to grab hold of what's been successful downtown design-wise and really just kind of blow it up up there. So there is going to be a lot of tile. <laughs> we make fun, but there's going to be a lot of tile because people love that. Nice. And- Barbara Lazaroff will love you for that. <laughs> that was Wolfgang's wife slash designer. <laughs> okay. But- and so we're going to do that. And, you know, we're going to have cool furniture that's, you know, unique and comfortable but different than what you'll see because I, I swear my staff probably wants to kill me because every single day somebody's going now where you know where did this piece of furniture come from where did that come from so that's gonna happen up there too we're gonna have some really cool pieces and and you're gonna have to write like a guidebook for your staff i have yeah i've done okay. that they're yeah they, they yeah, love me for that the furniture in itself is is art like the, yeah. like you've been really uh uh, intentional about the type of furniture that you're bringing into your house or mm-hmm. into your your space, and so even that is a reflection of your interest in art. I would imagine. Yeah, and I, I mean, I it's back to the point of wanting it to feel like home. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I would rather it be comfortable and cool and different. And I want to have a piece that's not necessarily designed for commercial use. It's I, you know, at the end of the day, bar stools for bars are not that attractive yeah. normally, and so I want to find something that looks a little bit prettier and. Is, is more unique. So that's what we're going to do up there too. I'll have to ask you uh, what type of stool we should have in my kitchen because I bought two stools recently and yeah. Felicia just looked at me and went, what are you thinking? <laughs> Why would you think that this would make sense for our house? I'm like, what? You don't like them? She goes, this is the absolute worst decision you could have made <laughs> that's for, a ball, for a bar stool. She's like, look at this thing. It's like it fall over. It looks like it's not even made right. Yeah. It's, it's such a gender thing also because I looked at it like, wow. Pretty nice. It was a very masculine, <laughs> yeah. angular-looking thing, and it looked good. I did tell her. I said, "Well, I bought him because we we're gonna have extra people at the podcast. It really was to fit this room, which is more dark in tone and all mm-hmm. that. And upstairs, it's very bright and white." But she just looked at me like, "I hope you had a receipt." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, gotta so, go for the approval next time. Oh, I'm just not even. I, when I was returning them, the lady said, "Oh, well, do you want?" Credit bag, you want to go shop for something else? I go, not with my wife not here. <laughs> She's like, well, like, there's Learned no way I'm lesson. making a decision without her anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just curious from, uh, you know, we because we always get into that. So it's been well established that you have a creative brain and a mind for art and wine. So how does you fuse that with being the, like you said before, business owner? Oh, my gosh. Liz, Lindsay Rice. Like, literally, how do you use QuickBooks? And, like, how do you go about hiring staff? Because you haven't – I remember we had this conversation a while back about you've had very little turnover. And now you're going to have to hire a lot more staff to work at the Vita Vita Midtown. I know. And I'm not going to lie. I lose sleep about this just about every night. Mm. It's – I mean, I, I – I, barely sleep. That's part of the thing. I'm constantly, you know, thinking about it and stressing about it and worried about it. I mean, I live and breathe that place. It's, yeah. it's, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a hard balance to find, but I, our staff is family. I have them over and cook for them all the time. I mean, there is not a week that goes by that I'm not doing something socially with some of my staff too. And we all have that closeness. We haven't had turnover. We've lost one person who moved away and that's mm. the only reason, but I mean, we, love each other very much so i'm i am a little bit you know concerned we're gonna triple in size and so i don't know what that's gonna mean but i guess for me just continuing to search for the people who fit what i believe in and what i want which is comfort approachability you know yes they're gonna know about wine and they can tell you about it but at the end of the day i want them to be good 
people, good bartenders, good, yeah. you know, you can sit and have a conversation with them and feel like they're your friend or your family. So that's that's most important to me with my staff. And somehow it's worked out. I feel like I just keep needing to knock on wood, but yeah. it's worked out that that's how everyone has been. And I think it's it's partially how I run the place. And Christian, my bar manager, is really, really incredible. And she just gets it and she runs things that way when I'm not there. And, and so I... I don't know. It's it's worked so far. So. Yeah, and I was going to say, um, because we are Facebook friends as well, like, you do travel a lot. I and do. as a business owner, you have to be very confident in your staff to be able to travel that much. I do. And I'm incredibly lucky. And I know I'm that jealous, that's not... I'm jealous, by the way, also. <laughs> well, it's not the norm for this industry. And I think because I came into this not being an industry person, this is not my background. This right. is not. And what inspired Vita Vite is my travels and my experiences abroad and wanting mm-hmm. to bring that back. And I'd go on a big trip internationally, usually every six months or so, because yeah. I think it's, and at first I was afraid to, and then I realized that our customers love that. They want to see pictures traveling. They want to come back in. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Every single trip I take is about wine right now. I'm not flying to Tahiti and laying on a beach. I'm, you know, I'm, it's. Oh, boo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Tahiti and lay on a beach. I'm just, but, oh, yeah. I just I, have to go to this winery. I have to go yeah. to Mendoza. It'll be a Malfi uh, coast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, New Zealand. Uh, oh, all the wine in New that's Zealand. That's next on the list. No, I just got back from Argentina and spent a week in Mendoza learning all about Malfi. How many and... of the wineries told you that their winery was the highest elevation winery? Oh, my gosh. Every single one. I'm like, <laughs> literally, there are mountains right? above us. You are not the highest elevation winery. This is, is not That true. is the real joke, it's right? So true. I mean, every wine person knows that to be the joke. Every <laughs> wine, every guy from Argentina that's like it's true. Malbec it is the highest elevation it's also Malbec. every single one is the truest form of Malbec that it could be right. yes exactly right, right, right. <laughs> but, except for if you were in Caor yeah. which is really the truest form of Malbec right. but you we blend in there, 25% Bernardo oh right. yes but this is the <laughs> yeah. true expression of Malbec right it's actually 90% Cab and <laughs> yeah. 10% Malbec yeah. Yeah. didn't but it's Paul true. Hobbs make your wine isn't he from <laughs> California yeah all right. yeah but it yes all that aside which is all very true by the way well, that does not matter this is the highest <laughs> It was an incredible experience. And, you know, I took Christian to Italy last fall and we drove around in a car for a week, about died every single day. <laughs> but nice. aside from that, I mean, it was... Whereabouts in Italy did you go? We started in the Piedmont region and okay. drank a lot of Barbera. And then we headed down, stopped on Cinque Terre to sightsee for a day and then into Tuscany and spent the last few days in Tuscany and Florence and, you know, wow. drank a lot of Chianti and... and uh, spent some time in Montepulciano, which is one of my favorite places in the world. And yeah. So, but that's so critical to what I do. Well, it sounds silly to say that, but it has such a huge impact on what I do that mm-hmm. I, you know, it's, it's the well, blessing of my, my job that I can travel like this. Well, if you can take a nuance of some of an experience you have there where you're like, man, I really love being here for this reason. And if you can somehow replicate that particular thing where you're at, then you're, you're giving back to your community by letting them experience something the way you had it. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, yeah. it's, it's those nuances that really make the, the hospitality feature and the, 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 the food, and, food and beverage design. It's why chefs travel and they, you know, go to Thailand and try some street food or whatever. Because you're not going to get that out of a book and you're not going to get that out of watching a Netflix food show. You know, you right. got to feel it. You got to smell it. Yeah. You know? and, and I mean, honestly, I, I went to Champagne a couple of summers ago. And as much as I've ever read about Champagne, I know exactly how it's made. I mean, it's been drilled into my head for years. And yet going there and seeing it happen, I learned more than I have in years of learning oh, about it's it. Such it's a crazy. I mean, go, I mean, I used to teach a class in Burgundy to burgeoning sommeliers and I thought that I knew it then but like I never had any clue once I went there I was like oh I had that all wrong and yeah. just to see it and be there and know the and get the idea of the lay of the land the geography the culture of the people it's yeah. such a difference yeah that all influences the wine and I don't think people realize that when they're sitting at home drinking but it's it's a story I mean it, it has a whole life and a past and and so especially some of these really really old vineyards that have been there for you know yeah. forever and ever and f- generations of families have been working them and it's it's just such a different experience getting able to taste right from the tank yeah and well you i know. think it also demystifies the complexity of wine uh and this like you know it's, you know someone from the outside looks into a sommelier or somebody that takes all this time to learn about a craft and they're like how would you ever remember or know these things but what like one thing i could reference because I'm from Northern California is if you're in Napa and you look at it from like North to South, um, you've got like highlands and 
like the higher elevation you get, you have like larger rock and it's like granite and it's it's like bigger grains of rock for the soil content. And it slowly gets smaller as you slowly go down uh, elevation and closer to the water source, which would then lead you to Carneros, which is almost like clay and like sand. And so all that just tells you is how the soil would be different. And then we can get super complicated about what that means to a wine. But as long as you know... Uh, the lay of the land, then you're like, okay, well, oh, this is Mount Veter, and that's going to be up north, and that's going to be up high elevation, so the wine's going to tend to be like this, as opposed to the the basin fruit down in Carneros uh, with the, the the Pinot Noir or so. And so, just seeing it and being in the room, you're just like, oh, that answered all my questions because I'm here and I and I could see what it's all about. Yeah, then your brain matches up the the label when you see that Mount Veter or Diamond Mountain, and you're like, oh, I get that because that. And then you taste yeah. the wine and it all kind of adds up. And well, the other thing too is that it it gives people a little bit more of a connection to the wine when, you know, I the weekend I got back from Argentina, we sold more Malbec than we have any other weekend we've yeah. ever been Well, open. that's because it was the highest elevation. Malbec well, obviously that yeah. one. But, but it's true. And, you know, you don't realize how much of an impact that has, but people get so excited about, about trying. So, I mean, people come in constantly saying, I want to taste what you brought back with you. Yeah. It's like, well, I didn't actually bring anything back, but, yeah. but hey, try this because I went to this winery and I met the winemaker and I, Well, yeah. Because you get excited about yeah. it. So you, you can portray that excitement. Yeah. So. No, I, I think where am I going in six months? Let's <laughs> yeah, and take us with you. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's so important to travel. I think for anybody, not only because you get to see these places and and that whole thing, but if you can, especially to go out in somewhere that's a different culture, it just changes your perspective on things uh, in such profound ways. Because it's even in how someone might order their morning coffee or maybe in a place like Mendoza, for example, a lot of people don't drink coffee. They might have the yerba mate tea, you know, or it just those little new, like you say, nuances and, and how they, um, maybe they don't order their bread until the meal comes or they, in Italy, they eat their salad after the meal. I mean, just so many small things that you would never think of, Oh, why is this done? Or how come these people have this way? Or like it, when you're in Campania, why do they drink like high acid or voluptuous whites because they're on the seaside and they have all this, you know, yeah. raw fish and this, and this shellfish. And it, and it just, it just changes your mind and, and really adds up the dots in so many different ways. It definitely does. And, you know, one thing that I wanted to do after this trip to Italy last fall was find a way to share that with people aside from just pouring the wine that, yeah. that we, that we drank. But so we hosted an Italian supper on a Sunday night in December. I was crazy enough to do it on our anniversary weekend. So a little bit nuts that weekend, but we had this beautiful, beautiful dinner. We had farm tables in the back, 50 people sitting there. We paired with, um, with a, a, you know, wine distributor who sent us to a bunch of these wineries and, and we had a meal that was based on our trip and it was just a bunch of random people who bought tickets and they didn't know each other at all. Most of them didn't know each other. And who was cooking? Um, uh, Chef Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, Jeff from Royale cooked the food. And, oh, yeah. Former and we guest had, of the show. We had we had bread from Bolted, and we tried to you know Vietri did the tablescape. Jeff um, Sizer, by the way, yeah. to give him a proper his actual name. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, Royale. Yeah, Jeff yeah, Sizer Royale. But he, uh, yeah, and so we had you know we just worked with all these local companies to have this beautiful meal, and I, basically I got up and talked about the trip, and we talked about the wines and talked about the food, and and people just had a wonderful time sharing in that togetherness and so i'm hoping to do one from argentina and you know nice. pair with some some more local people and and have a meal all about argentinian food and ribeye nice. some chimichurri yeah it's gonna yeah, be Momo it's not the, the probably not the meal for vegetarians but no. yeah. it's <laughs> yeah. definitely not i love going to a chascaria or yeah. whatever you want to call it but like going to the all-you-can-eat brazilian steakhouses Oh, my, my they sh- they sign the never goes right red. The table. Yeah. It stays green the whole time. If, Keep anyone's, on it. if anyone's been there, they'll know what I mean. But it's, you know, all you can eat. You just tell them when you want to stop eating. Oh, no. Yeah, they bring, bring like the it. side of lamb to the table and just cut it right yeah. on your plate. And, and those yeah. guys are badass. They're like walking around with huge swords. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sure. Why not? It's very casual. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of more Brazilian. Where Argentina is like all about the parilla. Yeah, right. That's a Brazilian yeah. They're so they're grilling. Speak. They're yeah. grilling everything. I mean, we it's it's pretty incredible. It's steak and veal and chorizo 
all the time. I mean, I don't think I had a meal, probably breakfast included, that didn't have red meat <laughs> for the whole week we were my there. Kind of, but my kind of uh, breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I had to have a little break from red meat when we got back. But I bet. <laughs> so is uh, Vita Vita Midtown going to have a little bit more of a food presence or not is it really. still the same? I'm keeping it the same. We, yeah. You know, it's not a full kitchen. We're, we're keeping it very minimal because, again, there are so many incredible restaurants around there. Mm-hmm. I, we're a place that you can drink and, you know, get a snack and... That's that's kind of how we're going to keep it up there, too. Nice. Well, all of the parents at St. Timothy's, where my kids go, will be there. <laughs> I will keep bringing them over to you. You'll you'll get to see this face a lot. But we're excited to have, have you there. And when do you anticipate it opening? Hopefully late June. That's the goal. Sometime this summer. I want to be open for at least part of summer. And, you know, it... it Obviously, with construction, you never know what's going to happen. But well, I'm excited for that, uh, Lindsay. I'm excited for what you bring to this town. It's very cool the fusion of art and wine with these with Vita Vites, and I am for one, I'm super excited to go to the Midtown location. You will often find me there enjoying a glass of rosé on the uh, on the veranda. Let's call <laughs> it. So uh, when it happens, and before then, go to one of the Vita Vite of your choice, and you will eat a little bit and drink very merrily. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, Lindsay, before we let you go, every guest of the NCFMB receives a little gift bag from uh, from us and from our friends of the show. Who do we have in there, Matt? Well, uh, we'll start off with if you're going to go to Vita Vita and have plan to have a lot of wine, take some happy hour vitamins first. Uh, they're a multivitamin for people who drink alcohol. Uh, they kill your hangover before it even starts. It turbocharges your energy and metabolism. It's created by uh, Wilmington, North Carolina's very own Ben Shaw. Yeah, and then uh, relating it back to wine, Miss Annabelle Commissar, who was uh, selling wine to everybody in town through uh, Sour Grapes, Opened her own place, Michael's English Muffins. I'm sure if you've listened to this podcast, you've heard a thing or two about Michael's English Muffins. But this morning, I'm all turbocharged with a breakfast sandwich. And Lindsay, you had the other half of my sandwich this morning, too. What'd you think? It was amazing. Right? Can't it's so go good. Back. Yeah, and so the, now you have some muffins of your own. Yeah, awesome. there's a little pack in there. Um, you also have some Social House Vodka. Uh, born in Kinston, East North Carolina. Made from uh, made from corn, non GMO corn in the local area, so it also is gluten free. And uh, what else we got in there? Uh, we got some coffee, always forty two and Lawrence coffee uh, or Larry's beans, curated specifically for you. Just like uh, you like to curate the art, they curate the art of coffee. And uh, and then of oh, course, uh, as an alternative to Frosé, you have a little uh, Ramona wine cooler in the can, which is like kind of a rosé sparkler with a. All natural, uh, gluten free, vegan uh, wine cooler with organic grapefruit and organic uh, Zabibo grapes from, from Sicily. I know a guy that sells that stuff. It would be excellent for Vita Vite <laughs> Midtown. I know someone who sells it too. Weird. thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. But thank you so much. Thank so you. please enjoy all that stuff awesome. and uh, we'll see you soon. Guests of the NC F&B podcast receive a swag bag, including gifts from these exceptional North Carolina producers. Social House Vodka, Hungry Harvest, Alley 26 Tonic Syrup, Michael's English Muffins, Mary's Beans and 42 and Lawrence, Ramona Wine Coolers, and Happy Hour Vitamins. Thanks for listening to the NC F&B podcast. I am the voice, Brian Hoyle. And if you've stuck with us this long, review us on iTunes and remember, five stars are encouraged.